But you know, I never thought I would see this day. For years, I thought the worst animated film I would ever see would be a troll in Central Park. Then, I made the inexplicable decision of watching The Happy Cricket. This is just dreadful in almost every conceivable way. And the crazy part of it is that it took 20 years to make. How does one spend 20 years on something and it comes out this poorly? The folks at Pixar could write a better screenplay in their sleep than the people responsible for the happy cricket took two decades to put together. But you're probably wondering to yourself, why exactly this is so horrific? Well, let's take a look at the various points and see why. First of all, the story revolves around an insect known around the land as Christopher the Happy Cricket and his magical guitar only he can play, despite it not having any strings. Now, do they explain precisely how a guitar with no strings is playable? Well, they do. Kind of. A wizard did it. When the story begins, an evil crocodile decides to ban music outright, and in particular, he wants Christopher's guitar. Now, he pretty much is as one-dimensional a villain as you can get. He wants to take over the world because... He's evil. Need any other explanation? So the Cricket and his friends now have to try and stop him from gaining control of the world. We pretty much follow them through one poorly conceived sequence after another, and let me tell you, Lord of the Rings, this is not. The dialogue is absolutely atrocious in this. A lot of it's just ah and ooh, and when there are conversations, it's just noise. These characters never shut up for a second, they just keep yapping away. In fact, you know what this is? The Happy Cricket is a cinematic equivalent of a politician. It just talks and talks and talks, but in the end, it doesn't really say anything. Not to mention, it does one of the most irritating things a family film should never do, and that is speaking down to the audience. Because of that, I don't care about these characters. In fact, most of them are just plain annoying. So whenever it is a dangerous scene, I'm not at the edge of my sea because not only are they boring and poorly directed, but I could care less about that cricket's fate. Now let's move on to the animation, which is really bad. It's incredibly inconsistent all over the place, and lip syncing the voices doesn't match with the lips whatsoever. And then there's the inserting of computer-generated images. If you don't have the budget of, say, a Disney production, don't try and make the animation fancier with CGI. It all looks incredibly out of place, distracting, and they don't blend with the environment whatsoever. Since the film is about a magical guitar, you're probably wondering how the songs are in this, and they are some of the worst songs I've ever heard in a motion picture. There's this one that the Happy Cricket sings to Linda the Night Star Deity, which is generic and absolutely forgettable and just nauseating in every respect. I think they took five minutes to write this song, and that's not a joke. Not to mention, the way they animate Linda, it looks like they stole from the rotoscope that Ralph Bakshi threw out during production of American Pop. How could the director possibly think that's appropriate for mass consumption? As for the other major song in this film, just a word of caution. Now, I know most of you are familiar with the rapping dog in Titanic, but I think even this tops that atrocity. If you're wondering, Yes, this is the point where I said to myself, this is worse than a troll in Central Park. Who in the story room thought that sequence was a good idea? As a whole, the Happy Cricket is a complete mess. It has characters with very little dimension, the animation is bottom the barrel. Horrendous, the story has no structure of any kind, and it's simply a stupid, stupid piece of work, not worthy of any theatrical presentation or even direct video for that matter. However, that scene is when it really, really showed how little the filmmakers actually cared about the audience. It makes me wonder what they spend all those two decades in development doing. Now, throughout this review, I haven't mentioned which country produced it, and it's a not-too-surprising place. Brazil has produced some great live-action works of cinema over the years, like Four Days in September, Central Station, City of God, and one of the best family films of the past decade, The Year My Parents Went on Vacation. Yet, strangely, Brazil's feature animation industry is a real rut, as it mainly consists of the Happy Cricket series, cheap copies of Pixar, DreamWorks, and other big-budget Hollywood productions, and the Monica's Gang series. Though at least creator and producer Marisa de Souza manages to put some quality control on those efforts. 
I guess you could almost refer to him as the Brazilian John Lasseter. However, if only one filmmaker is making decent animated films in your country, that's not a good thing. It doesn't surprise me that Carlos Sedonia elected to make Rio in Connecticut of all places. That's kind of sad when an animated film made in Connecticut is able to better show the beauty of Brazilian nature than something made in the actual country. So really, rather than just wasting your time away with the happy cricket like I did, watch Rio instead.